Alright. I don't know what we're doing. What are we doing? We're talking about hurt and relationships. Okay. You got some lipstick, right? Okay. Alright. <clears throat> Ready? Hello, I'm Derek McCollum. And I'm Sonia. And welcome to Can Me Talk. So this episode, we're going to be talking about hurt and relationships. Mm -hmm. Healing the hurt in your marriage. Yes. Honey, have I ever hurt you in the past? You have, actually. Back when we were newlyweds, mm. we didn't know how to work things out. But now we do. Yes. Okay. It takes time and patience. Yes. Well, thanks for asking me, but you also hurt me. Oh. <laughs> Did that hurt you? Very much. Oh, I'm sorry, Derek. I apologize. So, we're talking about hurt and relationships, and as you can see, I have my props here, mm -hmm. right? And there's four different temperaments, right? Yes, and four each, different ones. Yes. Do you want to break that down real quick there for us? There are the sanguines, the melancholies, the phlegmatics, and the cholerics. Good job, honey. Good job. Um, I'm a phlegmatic, and Sonia? I'm a cleric. Yes. And I have the four different props, and each prop represents a different temperament. And each temperament deals with her differently. As my weapons, mm -hmm. they have their different purposes. Yes. And it's, it's good to understand the purpose of each one so you understand how they hurt or how they cut. So with melancholies, sanguines, clerics, and flags, they deal with hurt differently in relationships or in marriages. Sonia is a cleric. Yes. Oh, she's a cleric. You are the pocket knife. Yes. Very um, sharp. Sharp, yes. Mm. I'm, I'm a leader, and leaders in the pack have pocket knives. <laughs> so in our marriage, um, do you, how have you felt like you, oh, just thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I was in the Marines. Yes. Uh, you know, it was just, it's been a minute, I'm veteran, so you know, just a little rusty. Yeah. But how do you think you have hurt me with your words? Well, I feel like, I don't take in consideration what you want to do sometimes, mm. which can hurt you as a phlegmatic, because mm. you want to express your words mm. when we're doing something. So basically, you need to be careful with your words, because yes. cholerics, they, they tend to act yes. first before thinking. Thinking, which brings me to the melancholies. They are the thinkers. Mm. Sion, she's a, mm. she's a melancholy. Mm. Melancholies are very sensitive, um, probably one of the most sensitive out of the four temperaments. So how they deal with hurt, they usually won't express how they feel. They usually show it through their emotions. Um, she usually likes to um, cut herself off of everybody. It's the scissors. Snip, snip. So usually when your significant other <laughs> is um, in the room, you know, they're not showing you any affection, you probably hurt them. Um, you know, Sion doesn't mean to cut everyone off. No. She has feelings and it seems like some people don't understand how to come to her um, when she's hurt. The best way, <laughs> the best way to come to her is to come in a nice tone. Don't come with her when you're yelling. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like to be hit <laughs> with shoes. <laughs> Or attacked with their hands. Which are which our darling daughter Zai likes to do sometimes. Which us which brings us to the sanguine. Yeah. Sanguines They're different from everyone else. Yes. They have a hard time sensing um, people's feelings because they are everywhere. Yes. Hence the butter knife. Yes. The butter knife you could use it for anything. Yes. Every anywhere. You can put and it in your car. We, we also have another one. And we have two. We See have they're two. they're everywhere. So with sanguines, you want to talk about Sai and how she deals with hurt? Well, Sai tends to act when she's hurt. She, she expresses when she's hurt. She says, that didn't bother me, because it really doesn't bother her when she's hurt that much. So she plays it off. Yes, she plays it off. Mm. But when it does hurt, she tends to be violent. Mm. Yes. Sanguines tend to act, throw objects, hit, bite. Punch. Bite. Yes. Yes. Oh. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's that's for all sanguines, but all right, that brings us to our final one, the phlegmatics. Yes. Ah, <sighs> phlegmatics. That's me, myself. I'm the big knife, the the big the chopper. Mm -hmm. Chop. 
Um, hmm, how I deal with hurt. Um, I usually like to defend myself. Yes. We yeah. don't like to be shown as weak, mm -hmm. you know? So when we feel, especially as a male, as a male, um, you know, I was emotionally abused as a child in my household. And my father, you know, he didn't really show us that affection. Mm -hmm. So I had to, um, <laughs> we're good. Anyway, phlegmatics, they, um, they'll tr defend themselves. Even though they're hurt, mm -hmm. they may, huh? <laughs> is, is Oh, that honey, that's, that's, that's her, that's her, that's her four o'clock. Four o'clock? Yes. Already? All right, well, that wraps it up. Um, so we hope you were able to learn with the tools that we gave you. Yes, please, please put them into perspective. Uh-huh. Yes. But now that you know, what you gonna do with it? Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia, thank you for watching. Today's episode is entitled, Where Do Broken Hearts Go? Remember that song by Whitney Houston? That was one of my songs. So we're gonna talk about how do you mend a broken heart? So, can we talk? <laughs> so you saw our children acting like they're us. And it was the craziest thing because I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> But I'm watching, like, they kind of hit us to a T. Oh, gosh. <laughs> a comic relief in our house, y'all. So it was it was fun doing it. It was fun doing it. And it's interesting how they picked up on some of the things they've heard for years, and it just became natural for them to share it. So. Yeah, it's, you just that, that goes to show you just don't know what your children are seeing right. and what they're emulating. What are they going to regurgitate based on what they see? Um, they, they had our little ways in there embedded in some of that that we had to laugh because it was true you know just different quirks that we have and how we talk our body language and the way that we respond to each other right. they actually imitated that right. um, so I hope that that helps you guys uh, just be a little bit more aware and alert as to um, how you're presenting to your children because right. we definitely have to be they watch our videos too, so you know they're watching everything, and they know everything. Yeah. About us, well, not everything. Not everything. But they know a lot. Right. So we're talking about um, hurt, and that's the biggest question that people have: is how how does a couple deal with hurt um, that has been um, impacted the marriage or devastating the marriage? So that's the biggest question mm -hmm. that people have. So we want to spend some time talking about. Uh, hurt uh, really gonna focus on three uh, three of the biggest types of hurt even though there's a lot more um, and then we're going to talk about how do you uh, mend the broken heart so when hurt hits a marriage trusting again is so so hard to do mm -hmm. yeah. and trust is usually the common denominator to um, poor reconciliation, poor re-engaging, poor vulnerability. It usually comes right back down to trust. Well, you know, it's like a sucker punch. You know, you, you get married and you don't expect things to, you know, you know you're going to have some bad times, you know you're going to go through some things, but we're talking about that sucker punch that you weren't even expecting. It's like a surprise. It's like you don't know and you weren't expecting it. And then when it hits, that kind of hurt is like, it's like crippling uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know it, it pushes people to the point of, of of you know quitting so you know there's there's three types of hurts there are three big hurts rather uh -huh. uh, not types of hurt but just and this is we want to focus on just three tonight three big hurts that can cripple a heart and break a heart in marriage right so first one is infidelity that's the big one the second one is Addictions. That's just as big. And the third one is past hurts. That's prevalent. So let's look at infidelity, mm -hmm. the big one, mm -hmm. infidelity. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk from so, a woman's 
you have to bear with us because what people have a hard time with doing this kind of a conversation is when we discuss some of the reasons infidelity happens and people who have experienced infidelity often become a little sensitive to thinking that we are giving excuses right. as opposed to explanations. Right. It doesn't matter what you do in marriage, you should always want to know why. Why did this happen? So we're giving you a disclaimer as to why we're sharing, why sometimes infidelity is perpetuated. Right. It's sometimes infidelity. Sometimes infidelity is perpetuated by, for women at least, by lack of emotional, emotional needs being met by a husband. Lack of emotional needs being met by a husband. I'm watching A Million Little Things, that's another sitcom that's on ABC, and there's a situation like that going on, and she said, you know, her husband just forgot to see her. He worked all the time, and for two years, she felt invisible. Does it make it right that she should cheat on her husband? Absolutely not. But should he not know the reason why that happened? Because unfortunately, a lot of people lack tools to communicate when they're in that place emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, or it's not safe, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. So one of the reasons that infidelity is perpetuated by women is because uh, there's a lack of emotional needs being met by their husband. So something else fills that void. Here's the thing that's so deep that I've learned as I've done counseling with women. When women say that they're done with their marriage and like they're really done, it's usually because someone else has occupied that emotional space. Because most women leave room in their hearts for their husband. And when they're really done, it means that they have closed that part of their heart up to their husband and somebody else is filling it. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling the truth. Most women do not just say, I want a divorce and they don't have anybody else on the side. Because mm -hmm. then somebody else has found a way to meet that emotional need. Uh huh. Now, there are some people that have met that emotional need, but the wife have, hasn't let him fill that heart that hole in, in her heart for her husband. Right. She's made room for that other person, but there's still that room in her heart for her husband. So if you know somebody that's like, I'm done, I'm done, not just because of their hurt, um, and not just because um, they aren't able to trust again, it's usually because somebody else has filled that void. Mm -hmm. Most women don't wanna be apart from their husbands. Most women don't want a divorce. Most women really want to be loved by the person they vowed to say, I, I do forever to. Right. So, so as a husband, I'm hearing that, and I guess I have to ask myself the question, am I meeting my wife's emotional needs? Do I know what those emotional needs are? Has she said it time and time again, and I have not been able to respond to them or understand how to meet them? So... Hearing what you're saying, I hope that husbands can hear that and mm -hmm. say, well, that may be one of the per uh, precipitating factors in regards to why did she cheat? You know, and, it, and, it's, and it's hard to pill to swallow to think about the why part because we think about the pain. Mm -hmm. But like Sonia says, it's important for us to think about the why. So Yeah, and that, again, that's just one reason. There's right. so many others. Right, and we don't have the we time have to, time you know, to we have go 20 into minutes all to... the reasons. But right. if you want to know, you can ask us, you right. know, chat with us on YouTube, right. subscribe, and we'll be talking to you. Right, we would love to have a mm -hmm. deeper conversation. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, this is a, a short vlog. This yeah. is not a, 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 a seminar or a retreat. Mm -hmm. It's a short, short vlog to give you some basic information on, on the why part. Yeah, but infidelity is a killer. Right. So for men, heart. for men, usually it's perpetuated by emasculation either before marriage mm -hmm. or within the marriage. So when I say emasculation, meaning that uh, some men have been emasculated, which means that their their manhood was not developed or was taken away. And so emasculation, that's what emas emasculation is. And so it could be before marriage. Before they even got married, a man may come into a marriage and they're trying to find their masculinity. 
Mm. Uh, if a man has been emasculated, we will find our masculinity. Most often is through poor coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. We will find it through uh, hanging out with the wrong crowd to, to get our manhood, to be around other men who are doing things that, that they believe are manly things to do. Or they may have multiple relationships before they got married, multiple women. Uh, some men go into having multiple bisexual relationships mm -hmm. to find their masculinity and it's, and it's a flip because they're, they've lost it and so they're confused about mm. masculinity. They don't know how and to so find it. They don't know how to mm. find it because no one, someone may have violated them and mm -hmm. you don't even know that they have been violated. Mm -hmm. um, so mm. they get married and they may come into the marriage already emasculated then on top of the, the the dynamics between husband and wife. And there's a lot of dynamic. We talked about that in our previous vlogs about uh, an emasculated man in a marriage mm -hmm. where, where the wife may have a, a stronger temperament. She may be choleric. He may be melancholy or phlegmatic. Mm -hmm. And so her her strong type A temperament has an expectation for him to be a man and step up. Do what you got to do. How come you don't do this? You know, you're so lazy. And so all those things uh, emasculates him. And you know what's so deep? I emasculated Derek when we first got married because I am choleric, which is also known as the lion and also the fire. Derek is phlegmatic, which is the um, golden retriever. And the element for him is water. Mm -hmm. What puts fire out? Water. So he had to bring some water to my fire. Yeah, but I had mm -hmm. to know that I had the water to put it out. He had to know he had the water. Right. Yeah, so it's, he had to know he had the water. Right. So, so. So when he found the water, he's been extinguishing every. With, with a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still hot. <laughs> This girl is on fire. Okay. <laughs> That's my ringtone. Yeah. So anyway, emasculation. It's on fire. Okay, okay. Come on, come on, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Keep going. Okay. Next. So, no, not next. I'm not finished my point. Oh, thank you. spent a lot of time on that. Emasculation. Here we go. Move okay. On. okay. All right. Addictions. Right. Addictions. Oh, addiction. addictions, you know. A lot of people are in denial about their addictions, especially the pornography and the drug addictions. Um, gambling and sex is bad too, of course, but it seems like um, it requires a level of, I guess, I don't know what I hate to say, brokenness mm -hmm. before someone can actually admit that they're addicted. Right. They usually have to hit rock bottom. Um, and, and while that's happening, their spouse is impacted right. by all the different destructive outcomes right. of their addiction, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, we know people that have transmitted sexually, sexual transmitted diseases to their spouse because of their addictions, whether it's um, emotional, um, it's it's destructive, the addictions, and it's so hard to come back from that. And it's painful. Yeah. All of them, sexual, yeah. pornography, drugs, cancer, it's painful. So yeah. addictions. Last one, unresolved past. Unresolved past, you know, traumatic experiences. Here's the thing, 90% of people in a marriage, one, or both have experienced trauma, 90%. That's a high, high percentage, which means you probably experienced trauma. If you're watching this and 100 people, you know, are watching this, 90 of those 100 people have experienced some kind of trauma. Right. And you're walking around as though you're not. Right. You're walking around as though you had not experienced this right. trauma. But it's coming out in marriage, because remember last episode was who do I see looking back at me? The mirror on the wall, Mar marriage is a mirror. Marriage will show you that. Right. And if you, aren't, if you aren't accepting of it, and if you're in denial that you haven't had a trauma, or you just don't know that you've had a trauma, and then you marry someone who stimulates feelings similar to that trauma, you're gonna have some unresolved past hurts caused right. by it. Right, and, and that causes, you, you're transferring that trauma into and on to your spouse. So you come in with the trauma, it's gonna transfer on to your spouse. So Derek being verbally and physically abused as a child has feelings, right? Those feelings are there in his heart. 
And then he marries Sonia, the choleric, the lion, the fire. And I burn him and I bite him, right? Lions bite, fire burns, right? And I burn and I bite him and it stimulates feelings mm -hmm. of being burned and bitten before. Right. But he, I don't know that, right? So I'm thinking we're just having a beef. We're just arguing. I'm not realizing that I'm triggering all those unresolved feelings. How many of you are married to people who have unresolved feelings and you've triggered their emotions and you don't know why their response to you is so severe? It's usually so severe because you have triggered an unresolved past hurt. So I was hurt. Sonya's hurting me. I'm going to hurt Sonya. Right. That's and their and, and their life is cycle. And then she's going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to hurt her. Mm -hmm. And it'll go on every day, mm -hmm. every month, every year until someone says, "You know what? We're too, too hurt much, now. We're too, too damaged. I, I quit." But no one dealt with the why. And no one raises the white flag. No one stopped to and say, says, "Uncle, I need some help. Right? Give me some therapy. Somebody yeah. talk to me. I need to deal with that thing." And a lot of people are walking around with unresolved trauma. Right. It's really, really prevalent. So how do you heal the hurt? How do you heal the hurt? Understanding your spouse's core. All right, real quick, you know me, I got all kinds of, forgot the knife, baby. He loves the It's a good knife. Props. I think I still got blood on this thing here. What? Right, right there, see? Right there. That's nasty. Okay. Core, cut your knife open. Let's go to the core. Your knife, right there. Am I going to be able to eat this apple? Is no, it washed? Because no, I really am. I, I, I really I do am hungry. Oh, I'm, on, I'm on my Daniel oh, fast. I know you're on, but this is for, for the people who are watching. Maybe you need to get a I know, but I really, example. really, you have more Oh, apples? you cut that real nicely, too. Yeah. You see how we cut things differently? Yeah, we do. How'd you cut that like that in the like middle? Like perfectly down the middle. See okay, that? we're trying to get to the core. We're trying to get and to the core. And you can see the core in okay. my apple. Hold that seed right there. You're going to need that. Seed just popped out. You're going to need that. All right, so we're trying to... Sonya popped that thing out. So inside the core, what do you have? Understanding your spouse's core. That's because I'm not a crazy Marine. I just get that thing like wide open. <laughs> Y'all just have a lot of violent issues. So how many, how many seeds you pull out of there? Pull oh. out a couple of seeds. Okay. So, right. so here, here's number one. Two. How do you heal the hurt? You have to understand your spouse's core. So the apple which represents the husband and wife. Okay. Inside the apple is what? I can't hear you. A seed. There's a core. And inside, she just counting all these seeds in here. Uh -huh. How many got I got seven? a lot. I got eight. I got eight seeds. I'm saving this apple. I'm eat this tonight. Yeah, you're not. Because you, right. you can't even eat that. That's not I even edible. That apple. It is edible. What are you talking about? Okay. All right, look. So... So Sonya has seeds. So here's here's the thing. Let's get rid of that. Here's the thing. How do you heal the hurt? Understanding your core. I need to understand that those seeds are Sonya's core. Mm -hmm. That was too deep. Let's, mm -hmm. let's just pause. Let mm -hmm. the thing, mm -hmm. thing marinate. Y'all think about it for a minute. Think about it. Mm -hmm. The apple is what we saw when we met each other and we got married. Right. Okay? Right. How many of you know what's inside the, the seed, apple. the apple, the mm -hmm. core. So, so And how many seeds are in the core of the apple Ooh. that you see? And what right? do you do with the seeds? So what, is, what does the core represent? The core represents things like um, my faith, mm. my temperament, mm. my values, my uh, emotions, my experiences, my emotional intimacy needs, um my principles and my past is that your core mm -hmm. now or then that's what those represent that overall represents. all the time i only got three your, your apple only had three i probably lost some of them <laughs> they, <laughs> i ain't got time to go back and get them but they, i got three out mm -hmm. of the seven mm -hmm. so my core my core is protect me Mm -hmm. My core is to show me that you love me. My core is, my core is God, meaning I, I have to have a spiritual core inside of me, which, which probably was not developed. Mm -hmm. So that's my core. So now. Undeveloped faith that's a good way to put okay. that okay boom okay boom that was yes. your core when we met so so number one understanding your spouse's <clears throat> core and then this is dirt 
and we're going to replant. So how do you heal the hurt? Understanding the core, understanding all that stuff, and you put it in, you replant. Right. So this is our marriage. This is, our, this this is marriage. Is two people, right? We're starting with the over. the seeds of their core going into one ground. Right. Right? One ground, one solid ground. This is the marriage. This That's is the, the marriage. Dirt. That's a new marriage. Right. So you, you, you water it, fertilize it, sunshine, and let that thing grow into And then the once it grows, how it grows is we develop a core together. Right. And we honor the core that were positive. Right. From our own apple, from our own hearts. Right. So okay. we honor that. And the ones that aren't good, we toss. Right. We should have tossed a few as an example. Um, but... You know, that's okay. Number two. So the ABCs of apology. So we're talking about how to heal the hurt. Mm -hmm. um, A, acknowledge the hurt, right? B is the behavior that caused the hurt. So you've got to acknowledge the behavior. And C is the commitment to not create the hurt again. Mm -hmm. So you have to acknowledge the hurt. I acknowledge that when I called you out of your name that that behavior B was hurtful when I called you out of your name I'm acknowledging that and I'm going to make a commitment to not reoffend you in that way will you forgive me that's how you end an apology right. the person may or may not forgive you but you got to end it with will you forgive me when you make that commitment the following phrase should be will you forgive me that is not time to explain or make the excuse or give a story behind it or a justification that's not the time the abc's is just what it is a acknowledge b the behavior c make the commitment that's it if you can remember that you can heal the hurt right and number three make it safe again we're talking about hurt we're talking about some painful things that have happened once you go through that process of of the apologies um, then the next step is now I have to make it safe so just looking at infidelity for a minute and uh, if if I were the one who was unfaithful in my marriage then I have to make it safe for my wife uh, I, you know my wife has to have accessibility to my life mm -hmm. because I kept it a secret for so long that to make it safe, meaning I have to make it safe for her. I have to make her, she has to be able to come into my world. Um, someone has said the other day, how a, a man has said, a husband has said, how long I gotta keep on doing this? Until Jesus comes. Not until you die. <laughs> because you have you have breached the, 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 the marriage. Yeah. And if you can't do that, then, you know. Yeah, we'll so, we'll come back another episode yeah. and talk just about infidelity too because yeah. there are different types of infidelity and right. there's a whole lot behind that, yeah. a lot of guilt that comes with it, a lot of different dynamics that right. come with it. So we'll do that another time. Yeah. Um, so how do you heal the hurt? You got to know the core of the person you hurt and you got to be able to speak to the core. You got to too. You got to be able to. Um, know the apologies, the ABCs of apologizing. And then three, you gotta make it safe. You gotta say, I won't reoffend you, it's okay. You know, it's okay for you to tell me how you feel. I won't justify it, I won't defend it, I won't protect myself with it. I'm open book for you. Right. Okay, so now that you know. Wait, I'm not finished. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. So, you know. Uh, if you if you are dealing with a hurt in your marriage, you know this is a vlog, so we we still want you to be able to reach out and and figure out how we can help you um, go through the process, to go through the hurt, uh, to see if there's something that um, that is mendable. Yeah, and that's really number four. You right. might need professional help. Right. And that's what we do um, all day. We'd love to do it with you if you feel like you need that extra help. Some couples can do it without it. It depends on how deep the hurt runs. Right. Yeah. You know, like okay. you know, like if you have a cut and I get cut with a knife, that might need a band-aid. But then if I see the bone, that might need stitches. Right? Right. I'm gonna go to the ER. It just depends. Do you have an ER hurt? Do you have a surface wound hurt 
It just depends. But if you have an ER, then you need to come see the marriage vendors because we want to help stitch you up. That's the stitch in the heart in our logo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we said a lot, but where our broken hearts go is to working on how to mend it. And we gave you the three different ways on how. And so now that you know what, what you're going to do, do with it. it. And if your heart is really broken, we don't take that lightly. Right. Um, and if you just need prayer, we'll be here to pray for you. Reach out and let us know. Well, thank you for watching. And until next time, take good care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.